Good morning. It is um, August 4th, Wednesday, uh, Thursday morning, August 4th, 2022. And on the table today, I have World War II with four realistic battle games. And it is a game book made by Usborn Battle Games, I guess. This is, these, these were, this was designed by uh, Andrew McNeil of Kingmaker fame. Um, he did Kingmaker, which is a great game, by the way. I know war gamers can be hot or cold on it, but it's, I like the game. And he done these. These were a, a series of books, right? It came out in 1975. This one was the first one. But it was called Battle Game Book 1, and it was four games inside. The, um, look at that splash page. Gosh, they were all good splash pages, right? Um... And then another one from 1975 here, uh, Galactic War, and they were redone. I do believe these came from the, as as uh, paperbacks, right? This is another one, Nazi at War. I think there's six of these in total. I don't have all of them. I got all of them, maybe except. Um, the battleship, when I forget what it's called, maybe we'll learn here. Fighting ships. I don't think I have fighting ships, but I think I got all the other. And this one isn't even really mine. Um, I bought it for somebody, but I want to look at it first. We want to look at it first before I send it on. So, World War II, Andrew McNeil. These softbacks, I think, were, were from the Scholastic uh, Company. And I do think they reprinted these again. These are from 83. I do think they reprinted them again in 91. So, yeah. And there's the splash page for the World War II book. Wow. Very cool. All right. I'll, this is why I love these books. They have a little bit, uh, I think, uh, yeah. They have a little bit on the history of World War II. We we're talking about the Blitzkrieg there. I'm going to show that off a little bit. I'm going to talk about, you know, the beginnings, right? And how um, the tactics used, the terror tactics of Latin War. Absolutely, that is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I like the art. Um, I think the art's pretty cool too. It draws you in. So, on the Russian front, right? You got some Eastern Front talk. The tank that that blunted the German advance. Okay. Pacific War, Jungle Warfare, those are great pictures. Japanese, American soldiers, and Marines, obviously. Well, so Dutch soldiers up there. All right, and then Battle of the Atlantic, submarine. I'm gonna talk about a little bit of all of that. So thrust into Europe. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's the landing, Normandy landing, I'm assuming. Last ditch defenders. So yeah. Defe and then you got defeated Japan. So they give you a good overview of World War II. And then they get into the games, right? They give you a time chart telling you when the games show up. And the rules this is the rules for winter war. Improving and storing game pieces. They give you this little article on, which is awesome. They um, put it on cardboard, making your own pieces, but storing it in envelopes. That's that's awesome because this this game primarily was meant. These games primarily were meant for for kids. So um, you can tell by reading it. You can tell by looking at it. You can tell by the. Uh, rules as well. The rules are pretty easy, right? The pieces, they give you all what you need, which are very much um, low, low counter count game. You got the attack chart and then you've got the object of the game. One player controls the German forces, the other player controls the Russian forces. The Russian player has to capture 
the railway junction in the German occupied town within 12 moves. To do this, he has to move any one of his pieces into the orange space. The German player wins in the, if the Russian player cannot do this. Let's see that map for Winter War. I want to see. We'll look at that in a minute. Winter War. Okay. It's the town. Gosh, I, I like this map. Let me read that rule. What did it say? Into the... Air assault. No, no, no. Then the German lucky town within the Russian player has to capture the railway junction in the German occupied town within 12 moves. To do this, he must move any one of his pieces onto the orange space. What are they calling the orange space here? Here we go. They're calling it right there. There's the junction. So we move it, get control that. So moving into your pieces into that. Okay, moving into your units into that. Cool, very cool. Like the map. Yeah, like the map. Lays down good so it can be played. It wasn't meant to be played out of the book, so you can't take it out, which I guess we can live with. All right, that was for Winter War. And what are the counters for Winter War? Here are the counters for Winter War. One sided. Cool. Tell you how to cut that out. Next one's carrier. The rules for carrier. You got three aircraft carriers, two cruisers, ten bombers, five fighters, and four amphibians. <laughs> Amphibious uh, vehicles. I'm assuming not frogs. <laughs> that would be very cool. That's carrier if they had frogs in it. Let's look at the map for carrier. Wow. Flat tops in the Pacific. That's giving you a little bit of an overview of the carrier game. Awesome. Carrier. Yeah. I can mess with this map too. Look here. You got West Island, North Island, East Island, and South Island. What is a very generic, but what's the object of the game here? Object of the game. One player controls the Japanese forces, the other player controls the American forces. The first player either to take both of the other players' bases by landing amphibian forces on them or to destroy the three enemy carriers wins the game. Destroy three enemy carriers or what's the other one? Take to both of the other players' bases on the island. So, American base, you take them, it's, they take them as done. I take them, Americans take them as done. So, cool. All right, what, what, other, what other game we have here? We have both of those were hex games, right? They had hex. So, that's really getting into the hexagon movement. Love that. Air war over Europe. So, air assault. Interesting, colorful thing, man. Whew. Might give me a headache after a few minutes, but let's see. Triple A guns, airfield, you get the bridge. Do you have? Well, let's see. I want to. I, I do want to read the rules again for this. I'm sorry. Let's see what units we got. Bombers. Bombers, Mustangs. Okay. So, okay. Well, let's read the object of the game. One player controls the Allied aircraft. The other player controls the Luftwaffe fighter. Players score points by damaging the shoot and, sh and shooting down the enemy planes. The Allied player also scores points by bombing target squares. So the player who has the most points at the end of the game wins okay so it's point based i was wondering how it was done point based cool then we have uh, clearing the beaches which gives you some good context of how they done it and then you got the game beachhead 
which may look like a and instead of it's it's square I guess you're moving upward more so moving straight ahead more so than anything let's see here Sorry. Air assault. There we go. Beachhead. What are the objects of the game? One player controls the Allied forces. The other player controls the German forces. The Allied player wins if he if he gets at least two tanks, bulldozers, count as tanks. Okay. And two infantry units in the south, southernmost row of squares or the board within 12 uh, on the board within 12 terms germ tank okay so the allies have to get down to the end within 12 turns okay i don't mind those conditions all right but that's it that's the book that is it that is a battle uh, battle game book world war Two. With four realistic battles. Um, yeah, there was other ones. And these other ones. Knights at War. Um, they're all pretty good. They're just... Are they good to play? Eh. I have played some of them. I have played some of them. Um, they're okay. I think they're better as almost a uh, an oddity. Something to read. They... Uh, and enjoy that way like this one here you got some very cool this is what I play very cool stuff in here and um, we should for we should for sure I just wish there was more stuff like that uh, to get you know I just wish we had more things like that modernly to maybe get kids interested in the war game and hobby this absolutely would get some interested in the war game and hobby, and it did. Uh, but there it is. There you go. Uh, make of it what you will, and uh, you can get them for not that much. So, all right, y'all. Have another video for you soon. But <laughs> I'm sorry. But what I was wanting to say is, I think we see something like you know battle game books, whether it was Worthington or. Or, or, or Mike Lambeau's great series, and we say, hey, this is it. It's, it's not a necessarily a new concept. It is just that um, that concept never was fully, we never took full advantage of that concept. The concept's been around, this and others. We just never took full advantage of this concept. And that's not to say, um, that we couldn't have, and it's not, but I'm glad we're doing it now, right? A lot of people are not going to like game books, battle game books, or, or the game books in a traditional style. They're just not, and I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm right now I'm in the middle of playing uh, a game of uh, Siege of Jerusalem. I love heavy games as well. Team, not by myself, with, with, a, with, a, with a team. Um, so I like heavy games as well, but I love what these are doing. I love the energy that's being brought in through these little books. I love the price of, not the easel, but the price of the new books. And But we they've been around. The concept's been there. It just never was um, fully taken advantage of. So there I go. I'm done. Y'all have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.